Welcome to this faith moment. I'm calling it the good soil. I don't know about you, but I find it really hard to concentrate as the weeks of lockdown go on. I find that because I'm not pressurised, I've nowhere to rush to, I get pictures of the past come into mind. Clear pictures. But what I'm thinking about this morning is when Jesus was faced with a large crowd of people. So he stood back by standing in a boat and the fishermen pulled out a little from the shore. There was a huge crowd around him, like a little amphitheatre. I think it, it was perhaps a bit like the amphitheatre at Scarborough, where you've got the water that's between the stage and the audience. Except Jesus didn't have a microphone. Why do I say I get pictures of the past? Because I remember doing a talk on the parable that Jesus spoke on. The parable was the parable of the sower. Jesus said, listen. A sower went out to sow. Some seed fell on the path. It was trampled on and the birds of the air ate it up. Some seed fell among the rocks and it was as if I remember doing the talk years ago at Parbold. It's as if Jesus then looked over the crowd at a man who had a donkey. He was an old man, he needed a donkey to carry a huge bag of seed for him. And he cut the corner of a bag. And the seed started to fall, some on the path, some on this rocky ground. And the crowd that he was speaking to looked over the shoulders to where Jesus was looking and they saw this old man with his donkey in the field. So it was as if he was using it as the illustration for this parable. Some seed fell on the rocky ground and because the soil was light, the seed grew up quickly. But then because it lacked moisture, it withered in the sun. Some fell among the thorns and the thorns grew up with the seed and choked it. But some seed fell on the good soil and it multiplied and grew a hundredfold. Those of you who have ears, listen. That's what Jesus said. I was reminded of this, this paragraph, this parable, not paragraph, this parable, as I was running in the morning, running across from the lay-by at Fairy Glen, across the fields towards High Moor. And there in the field, there were stacks of sheep with lambs. And one poor little fellow, one little lamb, had got his head firmly stuck into the, to the meshing of the fence. I'm heavy handed, I'd have made it worse. I needed Viv Sheep Johnson there to help, but she wasn't. I looked across the fields and I saw a tractor ploughing a field. I thought I'll go and have a word with the farmer. 
But to get to that field, it was in the middle of nowhere really. It hadn't been ploughed for years, to my knowledge. So I had to cut across a load of nettles and brambles, about 25 yards of it, to actually get to the good soil that the farmer was actually ploughing. And it reminded me of this parable as I waited there for the tractor to come towards me, as I waved him down for him to stop. And I was thinking, do you know, in this virus, this time, I get so easily choked with all the information, the poor information about it, the things that are not working out right, the horrors of it. And if we're not careful, it chokes our faith. And there I could see that I was in, I could see the soil, the good ground. And I had a simple prayer as I was waiting for this farmer. I was simply saying, Lord, I believe, therefore I will receive. It comes from Mark 11, verse 23, and it sums up this parable. You see, the seed is the word of God. I am the sower, and my heart is the good soil. If I speak the word of God, I believe and receive, it plops into my heart and I reckon I'm going to get the right answer. Do you know, I've, I've forgotten how big these new tractors are as it came towards me and as I flagged him down like a bus. It was almost twice my heart, height. The wheels of the tractor were nearly my height. The farmer switched the engine off, opened the cab, jumped out, wonder what on earth I was going to say. And I said, I'm sorry to, to trouble you, but I'm worried about a lamb that's got his head stuck in the, the fence in the field just by the lay-by. And he said, ah, oh, they're not my sheep. But I know the lad who looks after them. He got his phone out, rang him up, and the cavalry were on the way. I had such a peace about it. Somehow these parables bring a peace. I've been reflecting on that parable for nearly a week. First thing in the morning, I dug out each of the parables. There's, there's one version in Mark, one version in Matthew and one version in, in Luke. Do you know, I, I always thought the version in Mark would be the shortest because it is the shortest gospel is brief in his descriptions. Yet Luke was the shortest. 70 words, just the same length as the Lord's Prayer. Not much to learn. I copied them all out over a couple of mornings and went through and just learned them. Spoke the word of God out aloud. And it brings me a peace that goes with it. This is what I did look. I just get the book, I get a book, and I, I write them out. Here we are. There's Luke. There's Mark. There's Matthew. And I wrote a couple of notes up at the top here. We says, parable. A parable comes from pana, balo, that's the Greek for it, which means cast alongside. It's as if Jesus used that first parable to show what it was like to cast seed alongside. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. As long as we just keep going, keep our, our spirits, our hearts lithe and the soil fresh, then we'll be okay. God bless you. And have a lovely day. Bye.